Desirability is a social illusion. You must never ever mistake a person's appearance and what you see on the outside for reality. Never assume that you know what goes on behind closed doors. But don't get it twisted though. There is power in the illusion. There's power in the mystery. There's power in what you do not see. You see the moment people feel like they know you or know what to expect from you, you have given up your power and as a result, you've lost their desirability. Pearls are one of the most desired gemstones for many reasons. They are precious, they're rare. And what makes pearls extremely unique is the fact that they are the only gem material formed and found within a living creature. Unlike diamonds, rubies, and emeralds, pearls require no cutting or polishing before use. They are simply stunning exactly the way that they are in their natural form. And what makes a pearl so rare is the fact that only one in several million shellfish will actually yield one. The odds of finding a pearl in an oyster is one in 10,000. And the odds of finding one that produces a pearl of gemstone quality is one in one million. The illusion of the pearl is that you do not know that you found one until the oyster has been opened. All oysters do not hold a pearl. Listen to me very closely. When you have pearl energy, people should not know what they are getting until the oyster has been opened. I'm going to say that one more time. When you have pearl energy, people should not know what they are getting until the oyster has been opened. As a woman that is precious and rare, as a woman with pearl energy, the less you say, the more profound and mysterious that you appear. By saying less than necessary, you create an aura about yourself. You create an environment of power and respect. And what many of your faves don't get is that the less you say, the less you run the risk of saying something foolish or dangerous. Words can never be taken back. And while public perception is nothing, it is everything. I believe that this is one of the reasons the top row is viewed differently from the bottom in certain areas. Public perception is also the primary reason that many people have been unable to pinpoint the true dynamic of Indian Dirk's relationship. Now, if you did not know, India and Dirk are both from Chicago. Chicago is not called Chirac for no reason. They did not influence what we know as today's drill music for no reason. And they are not amongst the U.S. cities with the highest homicide rates for no reason. There's a different kind of evil, a different kind of poverty, mind, and pain, a different kind of death that lingers and originates from Chirac. Poverty and pain is Dirk's foundation. And I spoke on the violence and murders that surround him in the first proof video. And if you have not seen that already, please be sure to check that out. Dirk has seen unimaginable violence and death around him and his camp has been linked to multiple murders. I think it's Dirk's baby face and big eyes that have many of y'all fooled. You see, it is proven that people with larger eyes are often perceived to look younger. It makes them look more childlike. And since children are connected to innocence, one of the reasons why Dirk appears more innocent than he truly is is because of his facial structure and his large eyes. This is why Koreans, who are pretty much the goats when it comes to looking youthful, value large eyes so much. In South Korea, the ideal beauty standard is built around creating a youthful look and having larger eyes innocent eyes is one of the top ways to achieve this. And since our eyes are the window to our soul. It's no wonder that I see a story of agony when I look at Dirks. And I believe that this pain is ever so present despite his attempts to cope with it by way of women, drugs, and money. This is the same pain that India sees every day of her life, whether she is conscious of it or not, or whether she admits it or not. And what we have to get clear about is that India is not just dealing with your normal street ninja. Okay, you see, Dirk's lineage is built differently than the average Chiracian. His father, Big Dirk, aka Dante Banks Sr., was a well-known high-ranking member of the Gangster Disciple Street Gang who was arrested in 1993 and eventually sentenced to life in prison. At the time, Lil Dirk was only seven months old. Big Dirk was convicted of distributing crack cocaine throughout the south side of Chicago and had $8 million in cash on him at the time of his arrest, which was seized by the FBI. Big Dirk's refusal to cooperate with authorities and give them information on Gangster Disciples co-founder Larry Hoover was one of the reasons he received a life sentence. In 2019, Big Dirk got a second chance at life after he won his appeal when he was released from prison after serving 25 years.
Less than two years later, after Big Dirk's release, his namesake and oldest son, Dante Banks Jr., a.k.a. D-Thang, was shot and killed outside of a Harvey, Illinois nightclub. D-Thang's murder is one of the most impactful deaths that Dirk has experienced to date, as D-Thang and Dirk were not only very close, but Dirk often talked about how he looked up to his big brother. And Jonah, Dirk raps, and we ain't see it. I lost my brother when we was millionaires. I wasn't scared to die, but him, that was my biggest fear. I got your son and your daughter like you still here. Know how it feel to lose a brother. We got a bond still. 26 years, Pops got out to see his son killed. The reality is, is that Dirk is all too familiar with death to the point where it has numbed him. Just eight months prior to D-Thang's death, his close friend and label mate, King Vaughn, was killed. Dirk has also lost his cousin, Newski, who was killed two days after signing his first deal. His manager, Chino, who had just spoke with Dirk 10 minutes before he was killed, along with a myriad of OTF members and friends. And the irony is, is that Dirk fuels the same death that surrounds him by dissing ops and making fun of others in his own lyrics. Dirk is notorious for mocking the death of rival gang members, some of who have been connected to the death of those closest to him. And it appears that now, based on his recent losses of King Von and D-Thang, Dirk is now vowing to stop mocking the death of Ops in his lyrics. There are many reasons that I can name as to why I would never recommend young women dealing with guys that are not far removed from street life. But one of the primary reasons is the fact that a lot of these men have planted so many negative and karmic seeds that they do not realize the results of these seeds will always come back to bite them in the long run, whether through death, jail, or some type of misfortune. Therefore, by default, the women who become involved with these men will always be caught in the crossfire. Oh, my last message. I'm trying to tell y'all. So <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all. Don't f the kid, cuz y'all see the kind of b he got. <laughs> these not these hood. I'm trying to tell y'all. They take a take a b the kind of b That's the word. And all I gotta do is tell them the word, so y'all better chill. <laughs> Chill way I'll get the chin. Now, when it comes to India, a few things stand out to me. I think one of the reasons this relationship works so well is because India is from Chicago. So she's no stranger to the culture, to the violence, the pill popping, the drill music. There's a level of comfortability that she has with Dirk because she can relate by being from Chicago, even if she's not actually from the same side that Dirk is. There's a relatability that she will have with a man that's from the same type of city that she's from, which makes her comfortable around a man like Dirk. And we know that this comfortability exists given her past dating history. She previously dated a guy named Flip, aka Darius Lewis, who was from East Garfield Park on the west side of Chicago. Flip was no stranger to the streets and at the age of 17 was charged with accidentally shooting and killing his own friend, Kenton Scott, after playing around with the gun when it went off striking Kenton in his head. India and Flip dated for a while and at one point were expecting a child together before she lost the baby. India moved on to date Lil Dirk and years later, Flip was killed outside of a store in East Garfield Park. While Flip and Dirk might have been from two different hoods, they show us a history of India's dating life and similarities between the type of men that she chooses and more importantly, the type of men that she feels the most comfortable being around. Now, there is no doubt in my mind that India is far from innocent or naive as the world tries to paint her out to be. And quite frankly, I think India knows how to play the game to a certain extent. I believe that society has painted this picture of innocence and purity simply because India has not told enough of her business and because she does not thrive off of being a mess, because she moves like a pearl in the sense of public perception, because she's not constantly on the next shade room post or going live to prove a point. And she shows y'all exactly what she wants y'all to see. So she's ran with this society given narrative of innocence and naivety, which further adds to her allure and her power. I believe that Dirk 
father thrived off of not snitching or folding and was willing to do life behind it. So therefore, Dirk inevitably lives by this same notion of not telling as well, which he often raps about in his songs. And since India is his woman, it is only fair that she too live with the same mindset of keeping things within their household and not letting the world in to see just how messy it can get at times. And if you pay attention the majority of the drama that surrounds their relationship that has leaked has always been leaked from outside sources. Now, Dirk has had his fair share of drama with regards to women. There's no denying that. And so we're going to go ahead and break this all the way down. Now, around six months ago, a woman by the name of Destiny Phillips came out saying that Dirk was the father of her daughter, Leah. She's not released any additional information to the public since then. But I want to do a side by side of her daughter and Indy and Dirk's daughter, Willow, because it's giving very much dirt. Okay, it's giving very much dirt here, and it's hard to unsee it honestly. And it's not just the eyes, it's the eyes, the nose, and the lips. Her and Willow almost have identical facial structures. And my thing here is this whether this is true or not, whether there are discrepancies with her stories or not, at the end of the day, no woman should be able to come out of the woodworks and say that Dirk, aka India's fiance, father a child with her. Period. Okay? Definitely not six months ago. Indy and Dirk have been together for years. Okay? And if this was the only claim such as this, I would probably throw in the towel. But we must get into Travana as well because Travana's story hit me kind of different. Now, the backstory here is that Travana is a woman that grew up in Chicago around the same time in the same area as Dirk, and they know a lot of the same people. They were never in a serious committed relationship, but messed around with one another on multiple occasions. Travana got pregnant as a result and gave birth to a son, Romeo, who she confidently states is Dirk's son with a DNA test to prove it. Now, Dirk has pretty much been refusing to be active in Romeo's life on a consistent and full-time basis and for the last seven years has not provided much financial or emotional support. Travana has recently started to speak out more and more regarding Dirk's lack of involvement as she reports that she's just now tired of the flip-flopping of Dirk and his family and them only wanting to be involved with Romeo on their terms. But her biggest issue is the fact that her son is now getting older and is starting to realize the reality of who Dirk is to the world around him. He knew my son was his. And as my son started to get older, D-Thing was the one who reached out to me saying like, man, you know, he, he looked like, you know, bro. He claimed my son is his nephew. His pullback came from how Dirk responded to everything. Because when Dirk got with India, he wasn't honest with her about him having my son, about my son being out here. So to keep his home happy, he decided to keep my son a secret. But behind closed doors, his mom was talking to my son. She, she still will be talking to my son to this day had this information I got out to the internet. But they continue to want me to be quiet about everything so they can continue to be happy, not knowing how much this is mentally damaging my son. He see y'all all over the internet. He see the lifestyle that y'all live. And he's forced to sit back and watch that. I'm not covering up no more because to the media, you take care of all your kids. You pay your friends buying money. You take care of only the family let you tell it. But where is he included in this? And I never made it hard for you. Dirk was never man enough to come forward and take a test with my son. His mom decided to meet me in Chicago a few years ago and get a DNA test through her. The test says 97.999, whatever y'all want to call it, because we took a grandparent DNA test. And, and since then, his mom has been extremely active socially. Dirk just FaceTimed my son last week, and all my son could do was cry because he's idolizing the jewelry, the lifestyle, the cars, the... Him seeing you rap and everything, but he don't have that relationship with you and he's wondering why. Because y'all living a lie. You know what I mean? And then 
It's like situations with his new girlfriend, India. I don't know anything about her, and I don't have nothing bad to say about her. But at the same time, if you know these accusations, I could not be laying with no man. And a female is getting exposed like this from the shade room and everywhere else and not address the situation. What type of woman are you? With having your own kids. You know what I'm saying? And it don't have nothing to do with her. Don't get me wrong. But I just could not be laying with my dude saying, you know, not trying to figure out, okay, if this ain't it, let's clear it up. If so what's T? Because one of the worst things a man can do to make me lose all respect for him is to not take care of his seeds that he creates. And I often tell others that I truly believe that when a man refuses to take care of his child, one of the quickest ways for him to set himself up for a life of unhappiness and failure, okay, is by refusing to be present in that child's life. This is the type of karma that's on a whole nother level. And the sad reality is, is that Romeo is the one that is taking the biggest loss in all of this. Just how Dirk did not have his own father during the most pivotal years of his life and his childhood, Romeo is now experiencing the same thing. This is a repeating cycle. Trevana's mentioned that Dirk was upset in the past that she messed around with a guy that he and her knew very well. And that she feels one of the reasons that a lot of this has taken place is that Dirk cannot put his pride to the side. And while this might be true, I also believe that Travana does not fit Dirk's current image for himself and that he sort of looks down on her to a certain extent. I believe that India fits the vision for his public perception and what he puts out into the world and what he wants the world to see of himself. And while he can sleep with women like Destiny and Travana behind closed doors, they will never qualify to be enough to allow Dirk to be associated with them in public. And while we are learning that Dirk cares more about his public image versus the reality of the truth of what happens behind closed doors, okay, I question just how India and Dirk are relationship goals. If Dirk is not standing on business and India is not drawing lines in the sand. And what Dirk does is he lies. And that's just what... I'm happy for Dirk and his girlfriend. I couldn't be any more happier. He does for his kids. He supports his kids. And everything is everything. I just wish the time that he put into it, put into his kids. See me, I'm a real woman and I'm a real mother. I'm not laying up with no motherfucker that I don't never see with his kids. You know, I want him and his girl to break up for what? She can have them problems, honey. I don't need them problems at all. Well, if you so happy like you is with your girl portraying this in image on the internet then you need to really live up to that bro so here we are now with two people that are alluding to the fact that dirk and india display a certain public image which is not the real reality behind closed doors so last but certainly not least we have nikki who is the first of dirk's six to eight baby mamas. Nikki was in a five-year relationship with Dirk and is the mother of his oldest kids, Angelo and Bella. In this video you just watched, Nikki was responding to a diss song that Dirk released about her in which he rapped about how Nikki heard him and how he was famous now and his get back was putting Nikki far in his rear view. Nikki's also revealed some text messages between her and Dirk in which Dirk tells her that he used India to get over her and how his new situation with India would help him move on. And one of the first songs about India that he made was made to get back at Nikki. Now here is the game. Here's the game. Okay. Listen closely. The dynamic of India and Dirk's relationship is a song and dance of wounds that have been covered up with band-aids, yet they are not actually healing underneath. So from the outside looking in, everything is perfect and patched up. But on the inside, they are dealing with the same struggles and securities and issues that most relationships go through. But it flies under the radar because they intentionally keep their issues within their house. Again, everything that we just discussed in this, discussed in this video was brought to light by others around them. 
Okay. And if you've ever watched Dirk and India interact with one another, you will see just how submissive India is with him. Because Dirk is from the streets, he is used to dealing with women who are much more masculine in nature. And I believe that when he met India, he fell in love with her femininity, her softness, and her submissiveness. When women start getting clear about the fact that men will forever do them, it doesn't matter how many kids or baby mamas a man has. They can be as ran through as Dirk, Future, and NBA and still want a woman that is viewed as precious and rare. When men look for a wife, they look for a woman who is as close to as a trophy as they believe that they can get and afford. Luckily for Dirk, India being from his city and her relatability with men like him allowed him to get his foot into the door. And if there was drama as early as Nikki and as recent as Travana and Destiny, then trust me, there is a ton in between all of this that we have not seen. But songs like Broke Up in Miami when India broke up with Dirk after he didn't answer two phone calls she made to him tells us more of the story along with the fact that she told him that he was embarrassing her in public. The key word here again is public. Public perception is what they are focusing on. Broke Up in Miami goes on to shed light on India, bringing up women from Dirk's past, her being an enabler with his drug habits, along with continued references of them not giving out information to the public, even when they are on bad terms with one another. And in Block List, Dirk goes on to share how he is often worried that India will block him as she's done this in the past and that at one point India was discouraged when he told her about all of the women that he slept with. Dirk reiterates that India has nothing to worry about when it comes to other women and that he does not have to clear up or speak on any rumors because India knows where his trust lies. There was also a point where Dirk came home to all of his clothes being packed up in boxes by India, who had had enough of his games and his toxic ways. He even asked that at one point he was nervous as India has shared some of their relational issues with her friends. Dirk's reference to having to earn India shows me that there is a part of her that sets certain boundaries with him, even if only temporary. However, I believe that India is way too comfortable. Just as Dirk said in block list out of his own mouth, I believe that she's become too comfortable with Dirk, too comfortable with the money, too comfortable with the lifestyle, too comfortable with the cheating that Dirk has also referenced in a ton of his lyrics. Okay, I also believe that some of the women that Dirk has got caught cheating with, India has easy access to these same women on Instagram and that this has potentially fueled some of her ongoing insecurities in their relationship. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is also linked to the fact that she has now decided to get her body done after Dirk has rapped about loving the fact that she was natural for years on end. Many women like India feel that they deserve the ring after they've been ride or dies and stayed down with men like Dirk for years. And when you've ridden for so long and have, ex and have experienced everything that comes with these type of men, that comes with being a ride or die, you might as well take the ring, right? But a lot of times what many of these women don't grasp is that the majority of what they think to be love it's actually empathy and sadness that they feel for these men because of their past pain, their sleepless nights, their family and their close friends dying. They're using drug, their drugs to cope and their post traumatic stress disorders from death constantly knocking at their doors. And many of these women take on a mother role, which is very unhealthy, not only because it's not our jobs as women to mother men or repair broken men from the streets, but because comfortability is how we forget our worth. The best thing that India could have done for her relationship was to do exactly what she's done. And that's not address or speak on anything publicly. This is the number one thing that I want y'all to take from this video. Desirability is a social illusion. You must never ever mistake a person's appearance 
and what you see on the outside for reality. Never, ever assume that you know what goes on behind closed doors. But don't get it twisted, though. There is power in the illusion. There is power in the mystery. There is power in what you do not see. You see, the moment people feel like they know you or know what to expect from you, you have given up your power. And as a result, you have lost their desirability. Until next time.